Welcome to the Untitled Podcast. I'm one half of your host, Stonecraft, alongside my boy, Lorenzo Rocha. What up? What's up, my guy? Been a while. It has been. It's been a slow news cycle. It really has been. I, I haven't really, you know, had anything that I wanted to talk about, like sports-wise. I don't know about you. I had nothing. You had nothing, obviously. I've, I've had... I've had nothing really, dude. I could just had a lot of my mind. I've been busy. <laughs> so, we're going to do our classic, you know, what we've been doing, what we've been watching. Roach, lead the way. What have you been watching? What have you been doing? So, what I'm currently watching right now, show Stonewall's pretty familiar with, Avatar, The Last Airbender. I can't believe you didn't watch this. Can you believe you never, never watched watch it when it, it came out? Never watched it as a kid. That's like but now I'm watching it. Now I'm watching it as a man. <laughs> and what did you did you finish the first book? I did finish the first book. It was wild, dude. That all right. Show let's was talk crazy. through it. Well, just all right. So he Bang, we, Korosaka. The, okay, yeah. I guess you we don't have to explain the, the whole show. No, we don't have to give the whole show. No, gotta, no. I'm just giving the synopsis of the end. Yeah. I'm Let me say spoiler alert. Yeah, this show's been out forever. The fact that you haven't seen it is ridiculous. So he well, goes and maybe, maybe someone's gonna want to watch it. Well, they, they can and skip they over this part. I know, but this is the definitive spoiler alert. Cause I'm right. not a spoil god. It's on the screen. I put it on the. It's on the YouTube video. <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. Cool. Okay. The basic synopsis of the end, the last couple episodes, Aang, Sokka, Katara, they all end up at the Northern Water Tribe, right? Oh, so good. So Aang can learn water bending from this master. Mm-hmm. Long story short, Fire Nation knows he's going there, and General Zhao, this big bad Fire Nation guy, gets this humongous fleet together and attempts to kill Prince Zuko. Yeah, kind of like... Then he, heads off. He's like, oh, I'm going to get all the credit, right? Right. He wants all the credit for capturing the Avatar. Gets there. He, this huge battle's going on. Aang's trying to find answers in the spirit world. Blah, blah, blah. Dead. Gets so, captured by Zuko, who was thought to be dead. Yeah. He stowed away on the ship with the help of his uncle. Oh, Iroh, Dude, my guy. Iroh's so dope. He gets better, bro. He only, he only gets, gets better. better. <laughs> uh, so he steals Aang, and then the waterbenders are all fighting off these Fire Nation soldiers, blah, 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 holding their own. But then this guy, Zhao, goes and takes the Spirit of the Moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're, there's two fish in the water, right? It's like the yin and yang type thing. Yeah, it's like the moon and the like the sea or ocean whatever yeah spirit if so anyways, from the from the jewel <laughs> <laughs> anyways it's a lot to process you gotta take a hit um, of nick to get through it <clears throat> okay so he captures this fish that's the spirit of the moon and the waterbenders get their power from the moon mm-hmm and it's late at night, and so they were going to be at their strongest. Yeah, they're going, they're going in. And then they become weak. They can't water bend because the the spirit's been captured. And Aang escapes. Katara and them they find Aang escapes, comes back, and then this Zhao dude or I Iroh's telling Zhao, "Don't kill the moon spirit. Like you're going to put everything out of balance." And it looks like he's going to put it back in the water, and then he fire blasts yeah, yeah. and kills it. <laughs> And then the moon every just goes black. Bro. And Iroh gets pissed off and goes nuts dueling it out with him. I think what's and Iroh's nickname? Did they tell you his nickname? It's like the Dragon of the West or something the, like that, bro? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Oh, so dope. <laughs> so dope. And so you think, oh shit, like they just killed the moon spirit. Like they're done. Well, there's Princess for the water, tri the water tribe was saved by the moon spirit when she was a kid. Mm -hmm. So there's like kind of part of its soul in her. Mm -hmm. So she sacrifices herself to bring it back. That's Sokka's girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, Sokka's love interest at the time. 
Before this, actually, I should say, Aang gets pissed, goes Avatar State. Yes. Merges dude. with the other fish of the ocean, and then he destroys this whole fleet. Yes. <laughs> which is wild. And that was the first time he. Back. That was the first time he went to the Avatar State, right? Uh, at least to that scale. I think he did at the very beginning, like just when like when captured. he's alive. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, it was wild. They defeat the Fire Nation Navy. They drive him back. Princess sacrificed herself to save everybody else. Zhao gets captured by the water. You don't ever see him again. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> I don't think he ever comes back. Uh, it was wild. I hope I did it justice. Bro, so the first first season is the worst season by far, dude. And, and I it's fire. <laughs> and it's fire. <laughs> Oh my god. So what are you at right now? Like did you watch any So I just I just started I think I'm on like episode three or four of the of the second book. Alright. So I saw that stupid Earthbender general guy who wants to try to control Aang's Avatar State. A general guy. What's his name? I forget. It's like the very first episode of season of book two. General guy. It's it's not some general maybe it's a general, I don't know. It's some earthbending guy at this city oh bossing say is that where you're no, at? They're not, oh you're not there, they're yet? Not there yet oh my god that's I think dope. I'm only like one or two episodes in dang they all haven't right. met toe what, toff or whatever her name is yeah oh she's so cool <laughs> all right so anyways i've been watching that still playing warzone season four update where you at yeah um i'm actually glad they didn't update it because i got the battle pass all the way up while well, they didn't um so thinking I've, about getting what, a new tat yeah yeah tell them about the tat tat it up so i'm having this internal conflict of where to get it either my left forearm my right shoulder but i think i'm already decided on the left forearm mm. but i got a long ways to go until i get there so um. we'll see but it's gonna be kind of like a portrait like a close up face like pretty much just the face of like a bald eagle and then the face of a Mexican eagle whatever that means pretty much a bald eagle it's just not <laughs> it doesn't have a white head it's like all brown and then mm. there's like a snake in its mouth oh like the oh you're talking about the like Mexican flag like from the flag yeah gotcha. it's it has its special name I just call it a Mexican eagle <laughs> and then so those two kind of like wrapped around my forearm, and but in between, like as a divider, I want to get familia in like big letters, kind of like across my forearm. La familia. Diagonally, just familia. La familia. So. Yeah, I want another uh, tattoo. I think it'll look pretty dope. But I have no clue where I want to get another tattoo. You yeah. know, I yeah. don't know what. <laughs> Maybe I should. Maybe I should get the Mexican eagle fighting with the the bald eagle and have La Familia. Be dope. Be dope. Uh, oh. Since I is so generous, I felt like I could. Oh, strike is that the time is that who's uh, paying for the? Is that who's paying for the tat? IU. <laughs> Shout out IU. Yeah. So there's the, this COVID relief fund that IU's doing. Because they got twelve million dollars from yeah. the CARES Act. That's insane. This. And then a bunch of people have donated too. So like yeah. they had this before. They had this whole like you could sign up and get funding. And I did. I just didn't even think about signing up. I'm like, uh, whatever. I'll let you know if other people do it. That was my thought process. Right. Me and too. Then, Since I I have a job. I financially stable and then they do it again and they're like if you didn't do it before just just do it like just take the money like please just take it and so i tried to get xavier to do it but it wouldn't let him because he's uh, officially not in the studio yet. my dog is scratching hey, in the background you know that? hey what you i hear timber chill out um so yeah fifteen hundred dollars approved like instantly they're literally just giving this stuff away so yeah, that's dope. I actually got the confirmation today that so it's like I. going through. Yeah, so did I. I'll see you in two to three business days. Fifteen hundred dollars. Not getting, not getting jabated. 
No, well, I, I kept asking you. I was like, hey, uh, <laughs> the money going in? I know. I was, I was expecting you to ask me again today, and I was going to say the same thing, but then I got that email. Nah, bro. Nah, we good. Dude, if I would have got an email and you could not, though. I would have lost it. I would have literally lost my mind. Um, Anyways. You're, you're, my dog's distracting me over here. But yeah, shout out IU. And then... I have one goofy story. For oh, I'm ready. Wait, what he is already it? knows what it is. Oh, okay. I mean, I can think of a couple, but... The yeah. one I really wanted to bring up You're was... You're just a goofy guy. So I ordered some stuff off Target. Oh, yeah. You're an idiot. <laughs> I wanted to get a new Bluetooth speaker because the one I'm using right now that I own, I'm using it for work, so I'm charging it up like three times a day playing it all like all day it's falling it's getting messed up like it's going to be destroyed by the end of summer probably it's like i want to get a nicer new one that has better bass anyways well they had this one it's like normally 180 on sale on target for like 120 mm. and then i have 15 percent off like a discount because you're employed at target because i am still technically employed at target so I was like, why not? Just get it. Be dope. We'll get it shipped to me. And then I also really needed hangers. Idiot. So I was like, well, I'm ordering the speaker. Might as well order hangers to be too. Well, I'm here. Because it's 15% off. Might as well. Yeah. I, you probably guessed what happened next. Actually, you probably can't. But I'm going to tell you. <laughs> um, I actually got the stuff shipped to our Bloomington apartment. And I'm staying in nice. Albany currently. So I text someone, I'm like, hey, dude, I'm an idiot. I just found out I shipped these packages there. Could you get them and send them to me? So go ahead, sure, whatever, no big deal. So he texts me one day, hey, I uh, shipped that package. It was like 23 bucks. And I was thinking, oh, dope, you know, 23 bucks for two. It's not that bad. And then I got to thinking a little bit. I was like, wait, he said a package. So I said something about there being two. And he was like, wait, there was two? And I was like, yeah. So there's a little confusion there. I was like, it's okay. He probably sent... He's like, it was a big box that I sent. It was like, oh, It's probably, huge. It, it is a huge, huge box. I was like, oh, it's probably the speaker. They probably padded it a little bit. It turns out it was not the speaker. It was the goddamn hangers that I spent $5 <laughs> on. And he shipped them to me for $23. That was the cheapest shipping, too. Right. So I spent almost thirty dollars for five dollars worth of hangers. I asked you you were at work though, and I was like, What's in this box? <laughs> and I was already there, I already shipped it when you answered yeah. me. Yeah. Well I thought it because I just assumed, I was just thinking the whole time too, like that you would see both. I don't know. Why. I didn't see the other one because it was I, it was smaller. They weren't even together. Yeah. The well they got like, on different days. Oh. Uh. Yeah, the well, the big box stupid. with the hangers was right in our mail room, like at the right there. Yeah. So, but here's what it is: I can't complain. Now you just gave me free money, so yeah, for real. I got my hangers now. My speakers coming. Life is good. I am like armpit deep in this in Grey's Anatomy right now. It's actually really good. I'm not surprised. I mean, it's season five, <laughs> it's hitting its stride. Uh, so I can't even. What's this? Like Peyton's tenth time watching it? It's something like that, dude. There's 16 seasons, and there's like 20 some episodes per season, and they're Jeez, all like 45 minutes hour? long. Yeah. Yeah. It's a grind, Yikes. dude. It's, Wait, it's something to watch. It puts One Tree Hill to shame. I thought One Tree Hill was bad. It, it's, you know, it's entertaining. I feel like those hospital shows, like. You gotta try really hard to be bad. Yeah, you know? like I did. You ever yeah, watch really Scrubs? Did. No. Oh, bro, such a good show. It's like it's just so natural. It's like naturally dramatic. Yeah, that's why they're so. I mean, you know, ER started it. You know, you know George yeah. Clooney was on ER. I did not. It's how my brain my works, dude. ER. I used to watch a uh, like. I wouldn't watch it, but my parents would watch like the really are. That's like what it was called, life in the really are. 
And I'll never forget, bro. I think it might be the first episode. This dude fell. I don't. He was like in a tree. He fell, bro. The tree goes up his butt uh, and impales him. Oh my god! He's alive when he gets to the. He gets there. He's alive, bro. And they take this. I don't even. I don't remember if he survived, bro. But I was just like, dang, bro. I didn't need to hear that. Today. That's a. That's a tough day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough day but yeah i don't know why i thought of that all right so i kind of want to get a little serious you know um you know roach and i i think we we see very eye to eye on like the issue of police brutality against african americans um and let's start off did there, i don't want there to be any confusion George Floyd was, pod stands. was murdered. Breonna Taylor was murdered. I. It is literally mind Ahmaud blowing Arby to me. Was murdered. It is literally mind blowing to me that this is even a discussion. You know, like. Oh, but hey, let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be the general, like non-informed white population. Uh, there's plenty of white guys that are killed by cops too. <laughs> do their do their lives not matter? Hashtag all lives matter, dude. Yeah, that's and all, the all lives matter stuff. I don't. It makes my literally. I don't think I'm <laughs> ever more mad about anything. Oh, breast cancer awareness month. <laughs> all cancers matter. Like what? Yeah, I, it's just mind blowing to me. I mean, I don't know if you want to say something, bro. I don't know. We haven't really. We didn't plan this part out. We're just like, hey, we want to, we want to talk hey, about we're just it off the cuff. Um, the fact, the fact no, this I, is even a discussion is mind blowing to me. Yeah, like that shows I, like it's a race thing. I've you know said, what I mean? I've said a couple of times to a couple of different people, like it's, it is mind blowing that it's crazy. Like people want to pin it against it not all being about race, but currently it is about race. We want to get to a point where it's not. Yeah, in my opinion, Take but. It. It is a race issue right now, and for anyone who is not, I don't want to come off arrogant, nice. but okay. for anyone who's not like mentally capable of understanding why All Lives Matter is not a thing, All Lives Matter do matter. But they yes. don't right now. But they don't right, like right now. They're not the ones that are being that are being screwed over by the system. Yeah, and they never have been. That's the thing too. They never like. I understand as a Hispanic, you know, I'm half white. Um, I don't think. And we grew up in Napanee. I grew up in Napanee, Indiana. Nobody there knows what re- real racism is. Dude, that's just it, facts. It was hilarious to me. Look, like I was on Facebook a lot, especially last week, and seeing the people sh- share the things they share, and like knowing which people have left Napanee and like gone to school somewhere else, or just like been exposed to other things, and then people who stayed in Napanee and how different their thoughts are. Yeah, I mean that's like, not everybody, obviously, but are. I know it's not everybody, but it was like. There was that correlation with a lot of people, I thought. Yeah. Like, just because you don't see a problem, like, that's so mind-blowing to me. Like, how, like, narcissistic that is. You Just because you don't see the problem, like, in your day-to-day life or at all, doesn't mean it's not a problem, you know? Right. Like, there's people that, are going, that go through stuff daily that we can't even understand. And then, okay, I saw people say, like, Oh, he was breaking the law, first of all. Like, it, George, like uh, Floyd, you know. He had he was selling, like, counterfeit 20s. Okay. Counterfeit it, 20s. Is that is that cop, judge, jury, executioner at that point? You know what I mean? Like, right. I also I, saw seen people try to defend it because he had, according to the autopsy, who knows how valid this is, he had methamphetamine in his system. Mm-hmm. He had contracted COVID-19 in April. Apparently that makes a big difference. 
Yeah. Uh, even though even though those same people say it's not real. Literally. And then he had like different different like you know charges. He had stuff on his record, stuff like that. Trying to defend what happened to him, like in a way. It doesn't so matter. Like, no, it doesn't matter. Like I don't I don't care who that is, bro. Like you don't that's not uh, and then okay and then people are saying oh like people are looting like oh this is the black lives matter movement no those are the minority of people that are taking advantage advantage. of the situation and then people are like okay you can say that about black lives matter but you can't say the police like this is i do say that about police they're like this is like those people are the minority like those four officers that let him die are the minority that doesn't matter you are held as a police officer if this is not what you think about police officers they are held to a higher standard that's just facts like right. you chose this you chose this you, you d- chose to do this you know you should know you should be taught whatever whatever the situation is you should understand what it means like, to be in that position you chose this life you chose to be under the microscope you are held to a higher standard. If you are supposed to keep the peace, you are held to a higher standard. And he he woke up that that morning. He woke up. He di- he didn't. He died. He died that day. He woke up. It was just another day. He died. Oh my gosh, dude! Crazy, dude. Did you see that whole thing about the Buffalo Police Department? Some officer like pushed over this old man. Yes, bro. And he like. Cr- cracked his head on did the you see the video concrete yeah they just keep walking clear as day they just keep yeah, walking clearly see him pushing they said the dude tripped this once the officer that pushed him got suspended every other police like police on that or cop on that uh i think it was like an emergency task force or something mm-hmm. they all quit they all resigned or like Dang. stepped away as because that one dude got suspended for something that was clearly wrong. Yeah. And it's And I've just seen I've seen so many like countless videos of just police doing and I get there's not a lot of context with a lot of these videos. But it can go both ways. Yeah. But just some of the stuff they're they're doing, like Trump's photo op, dude. I literally saw someone share a post from the Federalist, keep in mind, that it was <sighs> That that was all a lie. Like Trump's the the protesters there were all rioting, blah blah blah. They were causing ruckus. It was justified that they did what they did so Trump could get through. I was like, you realize where this source this material is coming from? Yeah, like, and that's that's the problem. Like we live in the age of information, right? And like I saw someone like we live oh, in the age of information, information, but like you you need to be informed, like. This is age. You have no excuse. Like, it's not. It's not like back in the day. The paper route didn't get to you. Like, Fox News, dude. That's the problem. Like in the age of information, there's so. This is also the age of misinformation. Everyone has an agenda, which Shout I get. Out Laura Ingram. I ha- I hate. <laughs> I hate Fox News. I hate CNN. I hate all all network like news is trash. Like they all, is. they all get paid by people at the top, and they're saying all the like. It's just even like local news, like Sinclair Broadcasting. Did you you learned about this in the media school? I'm sure they own like seventy percent of like the local. Yeah, and they all like they all just spew the same stuff. Like it doesn't matter where you are. This is, I don't. I just don't understand, it's bro. It's like a form of brainwashing, dude. It is, but like. And this is <laughs> there is no this there's no gray area like you be to a, me a please this is my plea please be on the right side of history everybody just yeah, to me it. I've said before I'm like it seems like there's four sides to this argument there should literally only be one yes like, I just I don't understand how people can be that opinionated. To and, not see the clearly what is right. Yeah, I dude, I know. And then it's not even like a matter of opinion. There's like literally one path that is right. And we we all know. 
I hate the Donald. I think he's an idiot. But, okay. With that picture of the Bible, to, like, to Christians everywhere, he is not your, he's not your guy. Listen to this, dude. He's really Someone I went to church with literally posted on Facebook that Jesus Christ himself sent down Donald Trump. Oh my gosh. That that was like when he was that was in like 2016 and I'm like, dude, we don't believe the same thing. Like that's not no. Like how can you be that delusional? And then the same guy, this guy's an oh idiot. My gosh. I he can't, dude. he po- like when uh like Obama was in office he posted like this thing it was like obama admitting that he was from kenya and then someone's like you know this is fake right he's like oh yeah i just thought it was funny okay but when you when you shared that you no context that you thought this was fake right you're it's like you're part of the problem people are gonna see it people are gonna become misinformed yes dude i don't think i've ever told you this but when obama got elected my grandma kathy Oh. actually said he was the antichrist dude I, that's so fun you say that because i was in children's church bro and we were talking about like the book of revelations right and you know oh before, like the antichrist is gonna come he's gonna he's gonna control like all the like all the bank like he's gonna control like the world basically and then yeah. she goes like sound familiar like right after <laughs> Barack what? Obama got elected. Children's Church. This is 2008, bro. <laughs> I'm at most 10, at most. And I'm I just remember thinking like is she talking about Obama? Like <laughs> <laughs> this is my pres- this is going to be my president. Oh my gosh, dude. I miss That's Obama, crazy. dude. I miss Obama. My dad said he was proud of you, dude, of how much you're posting about all this stuff. And I agree. I know I for those who don't know, I don't post anything. You're going crazy Actually, right now. I'm, I, I've kind of cooled off a little bit. Yeah. Because um, I'm getting a little bit of hate, but, you know, it doesn't who? faze me. From who? <laughs> I'm not going to name names. I don't want to embarrass them. Well, tell them to get over it. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, dude. This He who shall remain unnamed. I saw something today again from him saying how those of you who are sharing things, blah, 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 hope you feel good, like making yourself feel better. You're not contributing anything real to this movement, blah, blah, blah. Like basically just talking down on us because we're advocating for something that we believe in. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's anything, like, dude. Like, what is wrong with you? That's an, that's an anything. Like people look down on you like – it's funny that they say that people say that people are just doing this to make themselves feel better. When when they're posting that, you know why they're posting that to make them feel to better. To make yourself feel better, dude. It's crazy. But yeah, I don't share a lot of stuff on Facebook or Inst- or Instagram or Twitter or whatever, but I've been pretty active with it the past couple weeks. Yeah, I was I'm I was you know, I I know your beliefs, you know. I know you you're against it and the fact that I you were advocating for it. I was like that's that's my guy right there. And, that's my uh, podcast member. Um, you know, and then stuff stuff that people are saying too, like, oh, they should just like protest peacefully, dude. <laughs> Since this is a they, sports we, podcast, they tried. let's not forget Colin Kaepernick was, ca- was castrated from the NFL. Let's give him. Let's give him uh, three good examples from this past decade alone. All right, the Colin Kaepernick protests. Mm-hmm started out as kneeling during the national anthem now i'm gonna come out and say this on this podcast and i don't give a damn if you have a problem with nfl players kneeling or anyone in general kneeling during the national anthem because they are protesting racial injustice saying it disrespects the flag you are simple-minded. You don't know what the flag stands for, if that's what you you're against. You have no idea. Like, and that... We're not going to open this bag, because it was three years ago. We talked about it so much mm-hmm. before this pod was born. But Dude, we got an argument with some random dude in the right dining hall about it. 
It was. It's ridiculous. People want to say peaceful pro. Why can't you peacefully protest? They've been doing it for generations know, of years. Yeah, generations of people have, and nothing has worked. Nothing has come of it. Okay, and I'll like, say this. In a way, I'm not trying to condone any of the writing or anything, saying, oh yeah, this is perfectly okay. I get there's cases where there are some people who maybe not trying to take advantage of the situation, but do escalate quickly, but you have to, like, relate with them. Who knows what they've been through? Maybe they're at a point where they're done. A breaking point, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I agree. Like, until, like, I, they were their ancestors were brought over on chains, bro. Chains. Like I was looking at like pictures like from the sixties, bro. That was fifty years that was like that was like fifty some years ago, dude. Fifty sixty, like, yeah. That that's not long ago. My grandparents were young adults when our grandparents were young adults when that was going on. The, like, like they were ex- clearly exposed to it. To segregation and that stuff like that's not far removed and to think and to just be like ignorant and just think like racism's done like no it's think not how, think how long donald sterling remained the owner of the clippers when he was clearly a racist and he still got two billion dollars at the end of it like i was telling i was telling peyton like she didn't know about like all the Donald Sterling stuff, and it, like can't. I was listening to a podcast or something, and it like came up, and I was like, "Was it a? Did they release a podcast or was it like a show about?" Uh, like, they did a podcast bad. about it, but I was just listening to, like Bill Simmons, okay. and he just yeah. brought up Donald Sterling, and I was like, "Yeah, this dude called Magic Johnson a monkey, like that. That's the holy grail of basketball, and he gets banned from the league. Yeah, I get it." But at the end of it, he still walks away with $2 billion. He's like... Quadru- yeah, he technically sold. He had to sell the Clippers or whatever. He's like increased his profit <laughs> from the Clippers by like 800%. Like, That's insane, dude. That's still a dub for him. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, he liked being you know, in the league. But I don't know, bro. He, he liked to think he owned players. That's insane. Like, that... <laughs> That people, how old was he? How old is he? Like 60, 70, 80? Yeah. That range. Yeah. Those people are running the country. Yeah, dude, That I age group is running the country. Crazy. Yeah, I saw some. That was crazy. I didn't really think about that ever, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember 50 like. 50 plus. The yeah. whole, our whole federal government, 50 plus in terms of like Senate, House, Presidency. I mean, that's how it is. All those big. Because, it's like, crazy. it's kind of like you work your way up, and, like, by the time you're that age, like, you've done all this stuff. You know, your resume's built. Like, you build your resume, then you go into that stuff. That's just how it is. And yeah. And it's just crazy. Like, <sighs> it's all, it all starts with that. Like, it's just a mindset thing. That's what, Things like, might get better on a, like, things, if things, if things are to improve, they're going to get better on, like, that local, that state level first. Yeah, because the federal government is not going to do nothing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> actions of Trump speak louder. But then there's the extremes to that too. Like in places locally, like it's not going to change. You know? Yeah, like that's true. It's just you see what Minneapolis is doing. No, they're going to disband the Minneapolis PD. Oh yeah, and they're just going to like rebuild it. Either that, well, they said they're going to come up with a new like, um. Like social protection service type thing, but that's what I thought. They were just gonna pretty much like rebuild it. And okay, I know that people are saying defund the police. Like, should police spending be down? Yes. Like the town of the city of Bloomington bought a, a freaking tank like three years ago. <laughs> they bought a tank. Like what? Dude, might but, have to use it on us sometime. But my girlfriend that's going to be a future teacher has to buy her own expo markers. Yeah. But they can buy, for, like, this systemic racism is real, bro. Like, the fact that we don't have funding to these schools that, like, are in inner cities, predominantly black. Like, that's not a coincidence. Dude, that's, that's part of the plan. 
I mean, that's what, that's like that's, that's literally not, the plan. That's not by accident that that's how it works. You know, it's not. It's not by accident that these school districts get written up by w- rich white people, and they like segregation is literally alive. Yeah, and, you can see it within the school system in Indiana alone. Like, ah, uh, it's so sad. Anyway, I guess that's <sighs> we're gonna our thoughts. Thoughts on the movement in general, kind of going to segue a little bit into a little bit of NFL news concerning it. Oh, yeah. So I was going to, I was holding this zinger till this. It's not even like a connection. It's like, oh, to kind of talk about the NFL. But the NFL would be the, like, they would not make a statement on racism until, like, the, the public in general, like, has been saying stuff. They're, of course, Roger Goodell's the last person to say something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's just, that's just how sorry. He I is. guarantee you. I guarantee you, Colin Kaepernick's in the league next year. Guarantee it. And Roger Goodell will look, see to dude. it. That's just such a bad look. But that's how it is, bro. I, I know, but like, that it's, whole, the NFL it's sucks. Look. Like, I just, I don't know, dude. Like. That's why I, I like. Love, I love I'm, me some football, but the organization does suck. I, I'm like, I love football too, obviously, but the fact that the NBA is so like forward moving and mm-hmm. like that, it, it just makes me feel so much better about liking the NBA. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it has. I think it has a lot to do with the player activism too, like what the players are actually able to do in that league. Yeah, and just like it's all, it's really like the player, NFL player being focus. able to chew up and spit out players like at will. Like, there's bad contracts in right, the NFL, that, but you can just cut them. That comes well. That comes from what I like. Like I just said, like the the NBA players actually have a voice in the league they play in. Like, okay, the NBA season looked like it wasn't going to happen, and then the top twenty players in the league all got in a Zoom call and made this thing happen. Like. That's just what. That's just how it played out. Like the NFL, no one cares. Like the players are playing for them. Like the NBA is coming back, right? But I felt I strongly feel that they were all doing it for the good of the league. The yeah. NFL, like if the players didn't like didn't have to play next year, like the players aren't. I don't think they're fighting for the league, the good of the league. Mm, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, the league doesn't do much, many favors for them, so I wouldn't see why. Exactly. Like, oh, you want my help now? One of those things. Like, and baseball. Baseball's not going to have a season straight up because the owners and first off, baseball owners are cheap. <laughs> and they're not going they they want to play like 75 games and pay everybody like half their salary. Like, okay, yeah. if I'm if I'm a rotation pitcher on the like the Dodgers or something like that, and I make 500k. Like I'm not playing a whole. Like I'm not playing a season for 250k where I could literally destroy my arm and like, right? You know, like there's just I, I'm cool. Like the MLB, the discrepancy between their stars <laughs> contracts and like the regular player is insane. And that's yeah, never, I didn't know that. That's never going to be reconciled. So anyway, I don't know how we talked about all that. Uh, but yeah, anyways. All right, let's get into the the poster child of sports, the NBA. The only league that deserves our attention. Season resumes July thirty first. That's so late. First of all, <laughs> it is really late, dude. I don't like the off season's happening right what, now. Like, I don't know what made it made me think that they would just literally pick up and start playing basketball like right away. But yeah. I'm just, you know, sometimes just don't use my brain. I mean, I I didn't think I thought it was going to be mid July, you know, like July 14th or something like that. Like that's just some random day I threw out. But that's so late. That's August, dude. Like <laughs> the only reason it's not August 1st is to make it sound like it's July. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> 
Like, oh, we're crazy. playing in July, dude. It's August. <laughs> yeah, that's August, dude. We're playing in August. And, and I, then the season would resume. The next following season's tentatively scheduled to resume in December. So they'd have, you know, after the playoffs are through, like, it's going to go through what? what they October. Say? I think October 7th October. is the last, this game seven of the finals. And then they have, like, a month and a half to get ready for, that's going to be a short end, obviously, but just another season. And yeah, there's going to be all these teams that haven't done anything. Yeah, that season, like, I'm just saying, dude, watch out for the Warriors next year. <laughs> <laughs> so 22 teams are resuming are returning uh the teams that aren't returning are the atlanta hawks charlotte hornets chicago bulls cleveland cavaliers detroit pistons rip golden state warriors minnesota timberwolves and the new york knicks rip i think notably the warriors aren't going to show up i i know like people were saying like you gotta have steph in in this like just let him play the eight games. Like that's gonna be ratings. But if I'm if I'm Steph, I'm like I'm the season's <laughs> done for me. Like I don't yeah, I don't want to come cool. back. I don't want to come back and play with Juan Toscano. You know, like I don't <laughs> I don't want to play with these trash players. Well, and I think it would have been a different story if they went a different route too. There was all these you know just the rumors of talks of what could potentially have like what yeah. could resume the season. There was. I remember hearing one thing about just a 30 team play in. Yeah. So, like, in that case, if they have a chance to somehow make the playoffs, is a, what are they, a 15 win team? I, they're, they're the last in the West. Like, they're not, they weren't good, you know? Yeah. Um, and then I saw the, so the Blazers were the only dissenting vote, right? Oh my gosh, dude. Literally, like, Okay, I'm going to look up their record right now. I've just been saying random records every time I talk about this. But, so, the the owner was like, um, they were just reflecting what their players felt, right? Right. And, okay, what'd they go to here? I'm looking it up. Um, so, Dame's like, yeah, I'm not even going to play if we don't have, like, a decent chance of, you know coming back the playoffs so they wanted and they they said that there was more innovative ways to come back that they wanted that's why they mm. yeah you wanted the world cup style tournament because you would have been guaranteed basically the playoffs like you would have been in the mix so what are they right um let me look up the standings they're 29 and 37 don't go 29 and 37 then you're you weren't gonna make the playoffs like why are we literally dude why are we acting like you were I mean, I just don't. If I'm Dame, I'm like, he's he's fighting for this this playoff chance. But dude, you really want to get bounced in the first round? I mean, be my yeah. guess, but yeah, for sure. So they were three back from the eight seed. So and then so there's these eight seeding games. Top six already locked up. That's top six from both, right? Yeah, the top six from both conferences already locked up. So we already know one through six in both conferences. Mm -hmm. From there, it's going to go. So you can go to seven, right? Dallas could sneak up even more. Like they're not, they haven't clinched yet, but they can, they're at seven right now. They can go up to six. But so if you get the eight seed and you're separated by less than four games, you have to play the nine seed. And then the nine seed has to beat the eight seed twice to get in the playoffs. And then the eight seed has to win just once. So I don't think I heard that detail. Yeah. Of how that be handled. So that's like their tiebreaker quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so my thing is what what's the point of all this? Like if you're gonna do a play in tournament, do a play in tournament. Like I don't want this dumbed down version where we not, might not even get one. You know? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's why does the nine seed have to beat the? Okay, say they're say they're tied and it comes down to like a tiebreaker, like just to even out eight and nine. So you're telling me like the 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 Pelicans have to beat the Grizzlies twice. Yeah, that's that's why they did it, dude. That's literally why they did it. Yeah, I mean, and everyone knows they did they did all this stupid like they 
were talking about all this stuff because they wanted Zion Williamson in. Which is just so stupid. Uh, we still we love the NBA, but sometimes they are kind of stupid. But I mean, okay, that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like that he does drive ratings. Same with Steph. Like they wanted they wanted the Troy Blazers. They wanted the Pelicans. You know that makes sense. It does make sense, but, but it's just so. I don't know. My uh, my whole thing is, if you're gonna do a play in tournament, do a play in tournament. Make seven and eight play, like do a first four like tournament, like the yeah. uh, make seven and eight playing. But I mean, if you're Dallas and you're up eight games from the eight seed, you're kind of pissed that you have to do that. So I don't yeah, know, I bro. guess I would have done it. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Or just but do the eight, the eight, the eight seed, and then do the four next teams, and then or or okay. Or do this. Why Why does the 8th seed have to be in the East for the Eastern Conference team? You know what I mean? Yeah, I saw that too. They were thinking about trying You're all playing in freaking Disney thing. World. Like, that's yeah. what I'm cool. Like, okay, say the Pelicans are the 8th seed in the East, you know? They're going to lose to the Bucks. Who cares? Like, oh my goodness. Did well... You s- so one th- the only thing that I, – because I was like, man, that's such a great idea, but I guess all those Eastern Conference owners don't want there to not be an Eastern Conference team in the finals. Don't know yeah. why I never thought of that, but that's a big thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even saying, like, reorganize the whole thing. Like, don't, you know, but it, like – Oh, you're just saying the eight seed, the yeah, nine seed the eight from the West yeah. could just be the eight seed in the East. Yeah, so do, like – Because we all know, like, the eighth seed in the West. Is like I don't want to like see. I don't want to see. I don't want to see Toronto, Brooklyn. Really, don't want to see that. I don't want to see Milwaukee, Orlando. Like the the Wizards are six games back from the eight seed. <laughs> like why did we even invite them? They have twenty four wins. They shouldn't be in the playoffs. It's a it's a formality. I don't know, dude. I saw someone say that Bradley Beal was and like one of the best five players in the league that you want to have on your team. And I was like, what are you smoking? Like He's a good player, but come on, dude. He's dropping 50 against the Bulls and still losing. Like, okay, you can score buckets when freaking Zach Levine doesn't care about playing defense on you. Okay. I was going to say, well, his team's pretty bad, but then I realized they're playing the Bulls, so. Yeah, so, I don't know, I don't know dude. There was this video that I sent uh, our good friend Schmill about uh, Jim Boylan, the Bulls coach. Just a clown, dude. Just a goon. He was like, someone asked him, like, why aren't you playing Denzel Valentine, like, any more minutes? Like, he was kind of in a groove. He's like, well, I like to keep, like, you know, I like my guys, you know, like, I want to give everyone a chance to play, like. I, w- I want to have Genius. the confidence of someone putting putting him out there, like I. W- but then the guy was like, "He's de- he he said he's developing, like he's playing well." He's like, "Okay, why is he not playing then? Like, don't you think that'll take a hit to his confidence if he's <laughs> just benched out of nowhere?" And he's a like, "Genius." And he like was flabbergasted. He like didn't think of that. <laughs> this dude's this coaching dude's basketball a, at the highest level. NBA coach. I don't know, yeah, dude. Come on, dude. All right. I mean, I don't. What else do you want to add about the season resuming? I'm just ready for it, man. It's going to be dope. Like, it's going to be dope. After being so, so dry of like sports entertainment for so long, this is the longest I think I've ever gone without anything. Like, we'd be, it'd be what? Finals time right now? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, we'd be crowning LeBron, dude. Kemba, are you are you really? I just gotta right do now? it. I just gotta do it. Uh, four months later. Yeah. So, okay. If say LeBron wins this, do you say do you think people? Do you think there will be an asterisk? Like in your mind. To me, no. No, I I agree. Because I think it's hard. It's gonna be harder for him to win under this. Because you're not playing in LA, like you're not playing at Staples with a bunch of right. There's no, and that goes for everyone, I guess. Yeah, but like, so but still, when, so so we get like Clippers, Lakers, change. right? When that happens, 
the advantage in that suit that always in the back of everybody's mind when Clippers are playing Lakers. at home, half the Lakers, half the stadiums will be full of Lakers fans. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know, bro. Yeah. It's going to be dope. They didn't mic everybody up. I want to hear everything on a 30 second delay. If they cuss, just bleep it. You don't, don't even bleep it. Just like make it mute. Just mute it. So. All right. We, I was gonna. I wanted to do the 2011 NBA redraft last time, but then we were like 2013. This draft class kind of like the 2013 draft. Let's do the 2013 draft. And I was like, cool, let's do it. Come on. But now we're doing the Time 2011 the redraft. We had to spare Zave because he wasn't ready for this. Yeah, you're probably gonna mess up the pick, dude. <laughs> wow, way to put me on blast. Nah, dude, I'm playing. I'm playing. All right, I want to. I want the first pick. Go, okay. send it, my guy. Twenty eleven. Come on. NBA <laughs> redraft. The pick goes to the Cavs. Should have been the Clippers pick. I think. I'm trying to think of what this trade was. I think it was like a salary dump from the Clippers, and they just like threw in. All right, let's see. Oh, this is a doozy. <laughs> Listen up. <laughs> On February 24, 2011, the Cleveland Cavaliers acquired Baron Davis in a 2011 first-round draft pick from the Los Angeles Clippers in exchange for Mo Williams and Jamario Moon. Oh, my gosh. What? <laughs> the first pick in the 2011 NBA draft yeah. turned out to be Mo Williams. But I'm trying to think of what happened. So I think Blake got hurt. Like that was supposed to be his rookie year, but then he got hurt, so he didn't play, or something like that. So they thought they didn't think they were going to be ass, you know? <laughs> right. All right. First pick, the Cavs, right here. They're taking Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard. It's crazy, dude. You do this redraft four years ago. Kawhi's on their one pick, and four years ago is still 2016. Five years removed, you. You think you know who the best player in the draft is from that class, you know? Yeah. All right. Who the T Wolves taken? So, with the number two pick in the 2011 draft, after scouting my big board, I'm going to have to go with Kyrie. Really? Take him at two. Yeah. The only other one I was considering there, honestly, was probably uh, Clay. Yeah, I think I would have picked. I don't know. I think I, I would have like picked Clay before him, I was, but I was gonna pick Clay before Kyrie. But I don't know. Like, I don't know. I'm just going with Kyrie. I, I, I like it, dude. All right, I'm trying to think here. Yeah, I'm gonna Maybe go Clay. It's probably biased. Yeah, Clay's Clay's probably Clay's the, the pick three. here. Um, I I just always like just wanted to see like. Obviously, Clay's situation is what made him, you know, into what he is. But I was always like, man, what if they just like, what if he just goes somewhere else and like, like you okay, him, him for the player he is. Him on the Suns, he's better than Devin Booker. You know what I mean? Like, and Devin yeah, Booker sure. puts up big numbers. The only and the I guess people say this because he doesn't necessarily get like the opportunity to. They haven't seen him mm-hmm. but, like putting the ball on the floor. Can you, can he, yeah. you think he could really do that? Yeah, I mean, I don't think he. Other than that, he does everything. I don't think like, it. I don't well, think it's really crazy handles, well. but I. He's very. He's the Tim Duncan of guards. Like, he'll make it work. You know what I mean? The dude scored what sixty-one points on like four dribbles or something stupid. Something stupid like that, dude. He's nuts. <laughs> what? Okay, so you went uh, Thompson there with the number yeah. three pick. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and take Jimmy Butler fourth. I agree. Jimmy and Kawhi, bro, that would be wild. It's a team of dogs. Yeah, I think Jimmy's the pick there. Um, I I've loved him with the Heat, dude, so much. Um, yeah, that's like that. That culture fits in perfectly. And even with the. Even with the Sixers, like when it when, when it was crunch time, he had the ball. You know what I mean? Like 
he was the top. He was the best scorer on a top four team in the league. You know, mm-hmm. like you just can't. You can't argue that. Yeah. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm thinking, dude. Me talking there was just me stalling. He's turning, turning those cogs. The wheels are. I see turning. one more like clear cut. Five, but really? All right. I'm gonna go Nikola Vucevic. Oh, you you're gonna feel like an idiot, bro. I'm not, bro. What? You literally because are. Because of who? Tobias Harris? No. Kemba Walker? I'm no. Kemba Walker? No, oh, no, 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 no. You wouldn't take him over Vucevic? No. Oh no, I'm taking him, so it's fine. Nikola Vucevic. Kemba Walker at the six. I think he's just holding his ground. He knows he messed up. No, 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 no. I I don't think you are aware how good Nikola is, dude. I, okay, this is my thing. Kemba Walker. Like, okay. I just, I don't love his game. You know what I mean? Like, it worked in college. It worked in the NBA, obviously. But I just don't, I don't love it. You know what I mean? Like, I think. He's basically I don't think he's, a poor man's Kyrie. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he's overrated by any means. But I just, you know, I just, uh, I don't know. I named my dog after him, though. Dope name. True. Gotta give him some some props there. Okay. Um, you went Kemba. Okay, I'm I'm stuck between Tobias Harris and Miritich because I love Miritich. <laughs> um. Oh, I'm gonna send you for a doozy. Or Bojan. Oh, okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna take Tobias, another guy that I think's overrated. He was on the Pistons. I watched a lot of them, um, but he's not thirty-five million dollars a year. You know, he's not that skill level. So, all right, who are the Pistons taking? Pistons easily taking Boyan. Boyan Bogda, dude. It was nuts when we went to go watch that Pacers Lakers game. That dude's a- wet. He is so good. He is, bro. He is. He's literally so good. One, well, I, I, is he underrated? Is he right? Like sometimes. Oh no. He went head I think to head. He's totally underrated. He went head to head with LeBron in that series. Yeah, that I think he's totally series. underrated. And he hit some so clutch good. shots too. He 40%, hits humongous shots, bro. Forty percent. Three point shooter for his career, pretty much thirty nine point four. I'm just saying, dude, if you need a clutch bucket and you're kicking it out to Bojan, I, I'm confident. I feel pretty good. I'm confident. I feel good. All right, dang, this draft kind of falls off out of nowhere. All right, I'm gonna go Miritich. I really like. I really liked his game, bro. When he was when he was with the the Bulls and he had that fight with Bobby Portis. What was hilarious? Their plus minus together was insane. They played so well together. And you took put, him at nine. Yeah. Or seven. Uh, what am I at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's nine. Okay. Um, Anyways, continue. I just like his game, dude. And then when he was with the Pelicans, he was a big part of that little little run they were having before yeah. uh, Boogie got hurt. And even then, he was like, he was the second most important player on that team. He was even above Drew Holiday. Like, he was just getting buckets. All right, who you got? <laughs> Jeez, I really don't know where to go here, dude. There's three Not bigs, and I think I don't know which one to pick. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take Cantor. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take Cantor with the time. So you know I I'm in my Ennis. I'm kinda anti Ennis Cantor. Ennis but, the Penis. <laughs> I just can't get over in that in that Warriors series that they played. Billy Donovan could not play him. Like he just couldn't. You know what I mean? And I just that's Defensive always liability. edged in my head that he just like could not have him on the floor. But he was so important to that team, so it was like, what do you do? 
you know? It's like the lesser of two evils. Alright, um, here I'm going to take Jonas Valanchunas. Big Valanchunas guy. Um, Huge Valanchunas guy. I thought it was weird that the Raptors traded him for Mark Gasol when that happened. I remember thinking, like, is that really that big of an upgrade? Yeah, I, I kind of did too, but I I watched it. Yeah, uh, you watched. I watched your, it work out. Yeah, I mean, their whole. I think they wanted somebody that could guard Joel Embiid. Yeah, I think that's literally it was just a matchup trade, and Marcus Saul's a dog, and I still stand by my pick of him on the fantasy draft. <laughs> Who you got, Jazz? Was this pick twelve? Yeah. All right, I think I'm going to 12th pick. I think I'm going to go ahead and take Reggie Jackson. What? Okay. <laughs> I mean, that might be where we're at in this draft, but I know that's Zave brainwashing you. <laughs> it is, dude. <laughs> Too many times Xavier was playing with Reggie Jackson on the Thunder. And just ripped you. Back in the old back in the olden days. Yeah. When the Pistons signed him, I was like, yeah, Reggie Jackson. But then I'm like, dang, well, that's a lot of Reggie Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> it's like too much Reggie Jackson, you know what I mean? He was nasty for the like off the bench. Um was, was he was Derek Fisher playing over him? At some point, huh? or when Derek Fisher was on the <clears throat> Thunder, did they like? Did Derek Fisher come on the team after he left, or did they like play together? Because I feel like I remember thinking, like, man, why is Derek Fisher on the floor? He's so washed. Um, I don't know, bro. I think they, I think they played a season together because he was on that. He was on that finals team, wasn't he? Who Derek Fisher? Or was it that after? I think he was on that finals team. Yeah. And that would have yeah, been this they, next they year. Played together. All right. Um, I'm going to go Tristan Thompson here. Um, I just. Okay, okay. So I was. I, I don't know if I've told the story to you, but I asked Peyton one day, I was like, what do you think of when you think of like Tristan Thompson? She's like, a cheating asshole that like just threw everything away. <laughs> and I'm like, that's crazy. When I think of Tristan Thompson, I think great rebounding. Great hands, great touch around the rim, huge butt. Like <laughs> literally though. Yeah. Um so in the twenty eighteen finals, um I was watching with my dad and I never actually like watched the overtime. I never watched that again. I always watched like the end of regulation. Mm-hmm. And I forgot Tristan Thompson and Draymond like were going at it. Tristan Thompson told them to beat him in the in the lobby, dude. That, that's crazy. I think yeah, just, I, I actually, I really like Tristan Thompson. I just think like it's unfortunate. It was at a time like when the league was transitioning to like yeah. the style of ball they play now, dude. But and he just doesn't fit. He was so important to that. It was the 2016 team, and then the year before, he's the second best player on that team. Yeah, dude. And literally, I, I just love. I just always. I always, you know, defend Tristan Thompson. Like, yes, his contract's probably too big, but think about when that contract was signed. Secure that bag. Think dude. about when that contract was signed. Coming if you're the, the Cavs, you have to pay him that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, because and at that time, that wasn't a crazy contract. You know, like oh, you're getting a you're getting twelve rebounds guaranteed, and LeBron fed him around the rim. Like, I don't know. I think that's a defensible contract. All right, Rockets. Who you taking? All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take Isaiah Thomas with the final pick in this oh, 20 draft. I didn't even think sneaky, about that. I saw sneaky him. Sneaky pick 60 down there. I saw him in the beginning, and I'm like, uh, Isaiah Thomas, maybe later. I really, I wanted to take him at 14, so it kind of worked out well. Um, I, was, no. I think he deserved to go above Reggie, but I just really wanted to pick him at 14. Yeah. Um. Dang, dude, what a what a career, you know. I always liked him when he was with the Kings. I was like, great, great six man, like could score. 
then out of nowhere he becomes a like he finished fourth in MVP voting. Yeah, yeah that's, that's no joke. Four five five eleven Z five ten. Yeah, five ten. Crazy, bro. But man, his, eighteen point per game score. His hip, dude. Just he tried to play on the hip in the playoffs. Doesn't play in that Eastern Conference I think, Finals. I think his con- messed him up. Yeah, I mean his career's never the same. Like if he just went once his hip gets hurt and they just fix it, maybe. But the Celtics like training staff did him, did him dirty. Like, and then you trade him. <laughs> And then he doesn't get the contract, <laughs> you, bro. You you finesse the Cavs first of all, dude. And I remember. I, oh, dang, I I thought I was so, so excited for that upcoming <laughs> season, dude. They, Danny Ainge finessed me too. I felt I feel so stupid. <laughs> I was like, dude, Cavs might have won that trade. <laughs> like, Drake Crowder, well, Jay Crowder's the last thing. They're just throwing him in. <laughs> I think we saw we saw the graphic that. Was showing all those Cavs players, right? And you had like Derrick Rose, Dwayne Wade, LeBron, yeah, Jay Crowder, Tristan Thompson, Kyle Korver, all these. Let's be honest, a lot of washed. old washed players at the time, dude, looking like the 2014 Brooklyn Nets. Dude, I don't know if I told you, like, I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but I remember Darren Williams, like, and then I think Bill Simmons mentioned it the other day, like on his podcast, uh, when Darren Williams got signed. Like as a, like as a, what are they called? I can't even think of what they're called when they get released and signed. Yeah, but I know that. But is it reserve? No, he got cut. Know. What's that called? Like a? I have no idea. Oh, buy. A, he's a buyout player. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And man, like, oh, I think this might have shifted the power in the league. Darren Williams. Darren Williams. Darren Williams. Was <laughs> Oh my gosh, dude! People don't watch basketball. We, we had to believe. We had to believe. Ah oh, man, what a tra- Like, what a tragedy! Imagine if that Paul George trade goes through, though. And let's just remember, half that team wasn't even playing in the finals. But I know, I dude. They all they blew it up. Which I I I, agree, I will always agree with that. They had to blow it up. Like, yeah. Larry Nance gave him good minutes, and. You weren't getting any from Isaiah Thomas. You weren't getting anything really from Jake Crowder. Rodney Hood. Dude, Rodney Hood. Why wasn't he playing? (laughs) I don't know. Why wasn't he starting? (laughs) (laughs) And then he comes in that finals game and goes crazy. Oh, my God, dude. And then J.R. Smith, dude. I mean, they don't win (sighs) that series, but... I don't care. As long as they got a game. That's an emotional ring. Right there, if they win that first game, oh man, that's an emotional ring. I think I think it's an emotional ring anyway, just from getting them to the finals. Ah, all right. Anyway, that's the 2011 redraft. Um, kind of wanted to wrap up with some UFC talk because that's the only sport really going on. Lead me. You want me to lead? Okay, Fight Island is a thing. It's I don't know how to say this. Yaz Island in Abu Dhabi, they already had Egg they had island. <laughs> they had an event there in like 2010, so they've been there before. They're gonna hold like four events there, dude. Um, the biggest oh, one always, is that always gonna be his hmm? his uh like last resort. I think so. I, that's gotta be back pocket. Yeah, that's gotta be. Um, the biggest one is gonna be UFC 251. Um, Kamaru Usman versus Gilbert Burns for the welterweight title. Usman's defending. Volkanovski versus Holloway two for the heavy for the featherweight title. Volkanovski beat the crap out of Holloway last time they fought. <laughs> Pidiorian versus Jose Aldo for the vacant oh, bantamweight belt, which is crazy because Aldo lost against uh, Marlon Moraes, so he lost his only bantamweight fight, but now he's getting the title. Like. Mm. Um, Henry Cejudo said on Joe Rogan's podcast, like it's his fault that Jose Aldo's getting that title shot because that's who he was supposed to fight before he fought Dominic Cruz. Yeah, yeah. And then um, Rose Namajunas versus uh, Jessica Andrade too. Andrade is the one that slammed Namajunas and beat her for the belt, knocked her out cold from slamming her. 
Uh, I mean, okay. Listen. Usman, I... <sighs> hasn't defended his freaking belt, dude. And he won it like a year ago. Because they've been trying to get this fight with Masvidal done. This, this should be Usman versus Masvidal. Like, what else does he have to do? Does he have to do? You know? Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I didn't know that because I saw you know Masvidal snubbed. I was like, well, why? Like, why would he be snubbed? I just thought it was like a given. I thought it would have been a given that he'd be in a in this like in a fight up sometime soon. You know what I mean? Yeah, like a championship fight. I mean, so. I mean, he's the BMF, but... <laughs> so, like, okay. Usman wanted to get paid. You know, he wanted to secure the bag. Masvidal is like, okay, I'm one of your biggest stars now. You know what I mean? Like, pay me. Like, But then, like, Usman wanted to get paid more than Masvidal because he's the champ, which I get. But, but he probably would have got destroyed. Yeah, so my thing is, Uzman, I think Usman probably beats Masvidal if they fight. Oh, really? Yeah, Usman's just <clears> kind <throat> of a beast. Like, I don't think I've ever watched him fight. So, yeah, I, I mean, he, really speak. he beat the crap out of Woodley, but Gilbert Burns just beat the crap out of Woodley. So, um, he's a little washed, maybe. But I mean, Masvidal Usman's the fight to make. Like, that's a huge fight, you know. So. Usman wins this fight. Is that what you expect next? I mean, I, okay, this Gilbert Burns <clears throat> dude starched Tyron Woodley, like starched him, and I didn't really, I didn't know about him, so I'm like, oh. so I don't, I don't sure actually know do. how this fight plays out. But the reason Usman agrees to this fight, Burns is fighting for the money he made on his last fight. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he's not negotiating new money. Like, this fight got made so fast, he beat Gilbert Burns a week. Like, he beat Woodley a week ago, and now this fight's made, like, just like that. Mm-hmm. So, I'm guessing he, like, kind of, he was like, hey, you're having trouble with Masvidal. Like, I'll I'll take the fight. Like, I'll, I'll take it. Like, screw it. Like, if I'm the champ, who cares? Yeah. But the thing with Masvidal, like, he's been, you know, in the game for so long. Like... He's trying to get the bag. And I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know yet either. Yeah, like he was, really he was. He was in those. Was uh, recently. He was in those like backyard like Kimbo Slice fights. Yeah. <laughs> what a legend! So Masvidal is upset with the UFC, right? John Jones says he's going to relinquish the lightweight ti- the light heavyweight title because. So this is what he's in contract dispute again. He wants more money. And then Dana White's like, I can't believe you're asking for money at this time. Like, that's ridiculous. The reporter asks, like, what's happened? Okay. If I'm that reporter, I, I asked him, I was like, I thought you said the UFC is making the same amount of money. Like, I thought you said you guys weren't losing money at all. Like, I missed opportunity there. <laughs> Just saying. And then, so you want John Jones to go up and face Francis and Ganu at heavyweight. Roach, Francis Ngannou, you know him? Yep. If I am John Jones, the probably the best mixed martial artist of all time, I need a big paycheck to go fight somebody that is 50 pounds more than me and that could kill me. Literally, Literally. murder me. That dude is humongous. And I don't, I just don't understand. Just pay, like, okay. You're only making that super fight because it's huge, right? It's going to make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Compensate yeah. John Jones correctly. Just share it. Yeah, come on. You you keep saying. Come on, Dana. Dana what are you White doing, keeps bro? saying it's the best of all time. Pay him like he's the best of all time. What are you doing, Dana? And it's kind of like okay, he's not Demetrius Johnson. Like he's not 125 pounds. Like he's beat. He beat your golden boy DC. Like I don't know, bro. And then McGregor. Oh, I'm I'm getting hot, dude. Come on, I love it. No. I like I love hearing you go off. Okay, McGregor wanted to fight Gaethje for the interim belt on this card, on this Fight Island card. You know, Gaethje just beat the crap out of Ferguson. Mm-hmm. But the UFC allegedly, I mean this this is what McGregor said. They're gonna do 
uh, Khabib versus Justin Gaethje in September because, you know, Khabib's going, like, I think his dad's, like, gonna, like, he's about to die or something like that. And his visa is, like, now all messed up. (coughs) Mm -hmm. And Yeah, I know everything's all messed up because of what's going on. And uh, McGregor's like, okay, why, why do I have to wait till after September? Like, I said I wanted to fight, like, four times this year. Like, and you won't let me fight? This McGregor's yeah. always always wanted to, like the reason he doesn't get he, the reason he doesn't fight is because the UFC wants him to fight certain people like he he wanted to fight Frankie Edgar like on a week's notice like two years ago that was gonna be his return fight so like, after all that time just so all these fights Dana White's the final say yeah 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 come on and man. I don't know if Seriously? I was telling I don't know who I was talking to but like fights don't happen in boxing because the money's so huge. And like the negotiations are crazy. The UFC is literally just like wringing the towel that is all these fighters, like to their last drop, like for yeah. as little money as possible. Which I mean, I get, but there's got to be like a fighters union or something, dude. Like something's got to ha- like the fact that Gilbert Burns is fighting Usman for the title is insane. Literally, just because he was easier to work with. I don't know. Like, but, yeah, I don't know. That just that just seems like contradicting to me for Dana to go ahead and do that, but then he won't let McGregor fight when he's able to. Yeah, because he wants him to fight it. Like that just seems so hypocritical. Well, and and Dana White wants could be McGregor too because that fight was huge. Yeah, and honestly, I think McGregor has a better shot. Do you see how big he was, bro? I think and, he's ready. And McGregor said he wants to keep fighting one seventy. So who knows? Anyway, um, to more, I don't know, happy news. Stipe Miocic versus Daniel Cormier 3, the rubber match, is going to go down in August. Gonna no, because Stipe is, a, I don't know if you know this, he's a firefighter, like, on the side. Um, and he's been, like, doing stuff. And, like, everyone's, he's been busy. like, Francis Ngannou's, like, he wanted, to, he wanted that last fight he had, like, a couple weeks ago to be for the interim title. And Dana was like, no. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Stephen Miocic is the, like, the best heavyweight champion ever. And Dino Cormier beat him. They're fighting again. Like, yeah. I don't know. So that's going to be dope. I think Stephen probably wins. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's why. Like, the f- Dana fight, White is a, fucking, is a savage, though. He I is, though. He is. Big Trump guy, but he's a savage. <laughs> I don't, dude. Like, it's just so weird, like how, f- like this fighting stuff works. <laughs> like, there's no, there's no players union. Like, it, you're literally bending to the will of some bald dude that gets red when he yells. Like, it's, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Anything else you want to add, Roach? Yeah, I, I kind of went crazy there for like twenty minutes. Yeah, you know. Um... I don't know what made me think of this when I said Dana White is a savage. It made me think of Dave Portnoy. Dave Portnoy? I don't know why. And this literally has nothing to do with anything. But I ordered this necklace off Barstool. I don't know if you've seen it or heard of it. Mm -mm. Called the Randolph Necklace. (laughs) What? I'm going to look it up right now. (laughs) Yeah, just Google the Randolph necklace. Do I need to be incognito mode? <laughs> no. <laughs> what is nah, it? something like that. Just look it up. Randolph necklace bar stool. <laughs> uh, it's so stupid. Okay. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Limited edition. <laughs> what? Is that a fish? <laughs> it's literally a chain with like... A plastic bag with like fake water in it, and then oh, okay. A fish. I think I saw this. I think people kept sending him fish, like when he was doing like the unboxings and stuff. I think people just kept oh. sending him fish. <laughs> so yeah, I got this necklace called the Randolph necklace. So peep, be peeping that. Good return. lord, dude! Look up the Randolph necklace, everybody. Schmil's like, all right, all right why not? <laughs> Schmil's already on it. Schmil's wearing Schmil's it already, right now. Schmil- I was about to say, she owns it. Oh my goodness! But this is no, good. I was, I was actually, what? I was going, going to the bathroom, 
at Bollywood, and I saw that like on his Instagram story. Instantly bought it. Well, tell Damn tell the people question. what you do at a uh, Bollywood when you go to the bathroom. You're just gone for thirty minutes. I don't. I don't know if I want to disclose that information. <laughs> yeah, I, it's literally just made it sound like really bad. But, <laughs> you know, just say you sit on the toilet you, for thirty minutes and watch YouTube <laughs> because that's what you do. I don't watch YouTube. Okay. What do you do? I can't listen. I don't listen to volume. I don't want people to know on my phone. You don't have uh, just like earbuds in. No, we can't have earbuds. Not, not in the bathroom. <laughs> I don't take earbuds. Uh, when I in general during my no. working days, keep going. Keep Long soon. story short, I'm like the best material handler there. Ooh. I'm usually pretty far ahead on most of my work, so I get this itch. I have to go to the bathroom, take advantage, stay up there a little extra, t- a little extra longer, give my legs a rest. Relieve myself. <laughs> Kemba's freaking out, dude. He's ready for this pod to be over. Kemba, I'll wrap time. up. I'll wrap up. All right, this has been but, the Untitled Podcast. All right, <clears throat> you keep going. Just keep going. No, I was just, I was just clearing my throat. I'm ready to go eat some beans. This dude eating beans. <laughs> I'm literally not joking. Wait, you didn't? I thought you ate already. I did. I ate a little bit earlier, but I'm I'm so hungry, dude. Peyton and I made some crunch wraps today for lunch. I saw that. I've been eating only really like one ish times a day because I'll get home. That's what I do too. I won't eat anything all at work. I'll get home, eat a small snack, go work out, and then I'll have I'll drink a little protein shake after I work out, and then I'll eat dinner. <clears throat> Kim is sabotaging the pod now. He's like squeaking his toy. All right, I'll go. I'll I go tend to my have dog. A- I just you keep trying to shut it off, to cut it off, and I don't yeah, let you. Yeah, keep going. If you got stuff to say, uh, say it. I was gonna say, next time you see me, you're probably. I remember a couple years ago, you're like, "Yeah, dude, I didn't see you for a little bit." And then you, I was like, "Man, you lost some weight." You're probably gonna say that. You did lose some weight, bro. I didn't see you for like two two weeks, like a month. This has been longer. Yeah. All right, I'm ending the podcast for real. This has been the Untitled Podcast. I'm one half year of Stormcraft. My All boy right. Lawrence Arocha. Me too. I'm going to say, if you know, you know, deuces. If you know, you know. I don't know what that means. Bye.